Hi! So, um, in this video, I want to talk about um, Beauty is a Wound by Eka Kurniawan. So, this book was translated into English from the original Indonesian by Annie Tucker. And I imagine that the translator must have had an experience <laughs> translating this book. Um, by the way, I just realized that uh, I already put my copy of Beauty is a Wound into the box um, of, of stuff that I intend to mail home. So uh, generally I would put all of my red books, uh, DNF books, and also books that I do not have any interest in reading into a box. But, you know, I already sealed that box, I don't want to open it again, and so I won't be wielding the copy over here too bad. <laughs> I just realized it. And uh, so, I'm going to have the image placed here. There. Um, and I'm going to make it stay there, you know, with my magical power. <laughs> but anyway, let's start talking about this book, but before that, I just kind of want to um, say in advance that this book, um, you know, if you consider yourself to be sort of a, um, you know, someone who is uh, squeamish towards certain things, um, you might want to reconsider trying this book because this book has plenty of, you know, trigger warnings uh, uh, associated with it. Um, basically, they're one of the most... Um, you know, uh, m most frequent things that happen in this book would be sexual violence, sexual assault, rape. That definitely is like almost every chapter has that, okay? And it also has plenty of bloody and gory violence, military conflict, um, pedophilia happens here, bestiality, incest, suicide, mental health issues, you know, mental illness. Um, you know what? It's, it's a lot. It's very intense. So, um, again, I just kind of want to reiterate that if you feel like you're not ready for any of these things, um, maybe this book is not suitable for you. I'm going to list down uh, all of the trigger warnings that I could identify in this book in the description box below. So make sure you check that out. And uh, yeah, let's get into this book. So uh, what happens in Beauty is a Wound? So uh, in the first chapter, we see there's this character. Her name is Dewi Ayu. So uh, she worked as a prostitute. And I use work in past tense because she's already dead. Except in the first chapter, she rises up from her grave. And uh, many people in the city in which Dewi Ayu lives in, which is called Halimunda, a, a fictional um, Indonesian city. This story takes place sometime in the 20th century. Um, Everyone in Halimunda who witnesses her, her, you know, her rise from the grave, her resurrection of sorts from the grave, um, they were all freaking out. They're like really scared of what's happening. Like Dewi Ayu in her white burial shroud, just sort of casually rising up from the grave as if she just wake, you know, she, you know, she just woke up from a nice slumber that happened for like 20 years. She has been dead for 20 years and then finally she just decides to rise up. And so of course everyone was scared of that. Everyone was, you know, scampering around. Some people actually left their baby in the bushes because they were like too afraid. Um, so yeah, Dewi Ayu just sort of does that and she returns to her home. And then uh, when she arrives at her home, she finds out that there is a young woman uh, sitting at you know in front of the house at the porch, um, this young woman is actually her daughter. Uh, her name is Beauty, uh, but what's special about her is that she is uh, described as conventionally um, ugly. So there is definitely that kind of ironic name uh, with her going on, and uh, Dewi Ayu was kind of 
perplexed by you know, the presence of this daughter because before she died she actually gives you know she actually gave birth to this daughter uh, some 20 days before she decides to die yes she decides to die <laughs> um, so yeah she was kind of surprised to see that this young woman is really again you know conventionally ugly and this young woman is her fourth daughter before this young woman Dewi Ayu has given birth to three other daughters as well and they all have their own um, families and lives um, but uh, you know in this first chapter we actually don't know why Dewi Ayu decides to rise from her grave it's definitely a mystery um, before we actually find out why she rises up from the grave we are transported into Dewi Ayu's past basically starting when Dewi Ayu is still a, um, a very young woman when she's a, a teenager she's actually a uh, a woman uh, no a woman she's actually a daughter of the um, Dutch settlers in Indonesia in Halimunda so at that time Indonesia was uh, colonized by the um, by the Dutch and so um, when uh, when the Japanese came the Dutch was sort of in this kind of uh, situation where they have to uh, uh, escape Indonesia and everything was really messy at the time and Dewi Ayu's family at the time was literally torn apart uh, because of uh, the uh, occupation, the Japanese occupation that happened after that. Uh, and her life literally just sort of becomes like this ball of mess in which Dewi Ayu ends up becoming a prisoner of war for the Japanese. And later, she becomes a comfort woman for the Japanese as well. And um, it is from her experience of being a comfort woman that she sort of gets sucked into this profession of being a prostitute. And that sort of becomes her work, her occupation throughout the rest of her life. Even after the Japanese has, um, you know, ha uh, have left, uh, she remains a prostitute. And throughout her um, career as a prostitute, she gave birth to three daughters. And these daughters, uh, we also begin to explore their stories, how these daughters meet their partners, who their partners are. Basically, their partners are just sort of people that have some kind of influence. Uh, uh, people who later, in the later uh, part of the book, have uh, influence, political influence in Halimunda. We have people, we have a man who used to be a... Um, uh, uh, a commanding officer uh, who used to be under the Japanese but he's, he's a local person but he used to work for the Japanese and then he betrayed the Japanese and then he sort of becomes a, um, a leader of the army and gets himself settled in Halimunda becoming like this top ranking officer we also have uh, uh, some guy who came from outside Halimunda who is this really invincible guy, really strong, supernaturally strong, and sort of becomes the leader of the thug in Halimunda. And then we also have another guy who is actually the leader, uh, eventually, the eventual leader of the Communist Party uh, based in Halimunda. So all of these guys, these three guys, would end up becoming Dewi Ayu's sons-in-law and you know when you have these people becoming the sons-in-law of this you know this woman you know all of these men they all have like you know their own political niche in that city and you can easily guess what could happen you know all of the bad things that could happen uh, with their clashing political ideologies there would be a lot of conflicts happening in this book a lot of violence as well so many messy stuff and it's safe to say that the the lives of Dewi Ayu's family including her daughters are going to be so much so much messy so uh, this book is a, a multi-generational saga 
in which we explore the life of uh, Devi Ayu and also her grandparents um, and her daughters and her grandchildren as well. So uh, it spans across uh, a few generations. It's really interesting. And the time frame is, um, is within the 20th century um, you know, of Indonesian history. So we also see the different kinds of powers, foreign powers that have occupied Indonesia as colonizers. And uh, we also see what happened to Indonesia as a whole when these foreign powers decide to just scamper off and leave and uh, all of those messy things the 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 you know the the the, um, the things that they leave behind the kind of trauma that they leave behind on the country and its society you know the local people all of these mess and uh, we see all of these things through the point of view of Dewi Ayu's family and how all of these events actually influence her family as well. And uh, we find out that all of the bad things that happen to Dewi Ayu's family is a result of a curse. But, you know, one thing that this book really shows you is that is it really a curse? Or is it simply because, you know, all of these historical events starting from the colonization of a country, you know, is it really because, uh, you know, some kind of magical thing happening to this family that caused them to be torn apart? Or is it really just because of the external environment, the colonization, the war, the conflicts that really leads to this family having to be uh, you know having their lives to be so chaotic and really violent um, earlier when I say that this book is filled with rape um, a female character in this book would generally you know do not expect to have a pleasant experience like violence is something that happens to nearly every character in this book uh, I would say that none of the characters in this book actually experienced a wonderful life. Everyone suffers, everyone is miserable in their own way, but what I really like about this book is that you know, the female characters, um, so we have Dewi Ayu of course, the protagonist, and Dewi Ayu's daughter. So uh, the first daughter is named Alamanda. The second daughter is named Adinda, and uh, the third daughter is named Maya Dewi. Also, the fourth daughter is named Beauty. So, all of these characters, um, safe to say that their lives are not pleasant in this book at all. Um, there are definitely rape, you know, or rapes happening in these um, in these characters' lives. But what I really like about these characters is that they feel, they feel like they have agency, you know, and um, they also feel kind of inspiring. Like they have this sort of um, uh, stoic way of dealing with uh, the difficulties that they face um, in their lives. And they are not the kind of characters in which um, you know, the women are portrayed in this like really stereotypical way. Instead, you have these female characters being portrayed as someone who is wrong, you know, people who are wrong multiple times, and but they still carry on, you know. And uh, I really like that. I, I like the portrayal of the female characters in this book, despite the kinds of bad things that are being subjected on these characters. Um, on the other hand, I feel that um, the male characters in this book, they are much more crude. Even though I would describe all characters in this book as crude, but the male characters especially are kind of crude because they tend to be the perpetrators of violence, whether it's the killing or conflict or war or the rape sexual assault they tend to be the perpetrator of violence in this book and um, often they are described 
especially when it comes to scenes of sexual assault, the male characters are described with as you know with a more heightened focus on the genitals. So definitely there is some kind of a almost caricature ish way of describing or you know of portraying the male characters in this book which I think is kind of interesting as well um, so yeah everyone in this book just sort of live a very horrible life because of things that happen to them because of the war that is happening in this town um, but I would say as a whole there are so many things happening in this book the pacing feels quite fast um, I also realized that there are plenty of parallels and similarities between this book and 100 Years of Solitude. Uh, I mean, you know, starting of course with the uh, inclusion of magical realism, I really like the way that magical realism is treated in this book because it's, again, I think it's very similar to, you know, Solitude. Um, magical realism is written in this sort of... Um, nonchalant and matter-of-fact way uh, it's written in this like really deadpan fashion in which you know things happen and the narrator does not react to it like the narrator does not feel amazed or show that it's amazed or shocked or you know emotionally reactive towards it it just sort of describes that thing in as if it's like another thing that happens and uh, the characters themselves they tend to kind of react normally to you know to all of the magical stuff that happens in uh, this story as well so that's one parallel another parallel is the inclusion of gratuitous violence like violence is a plenty in beauty as a wound and is also a lot in solitude um, you know, war is definitely there, and when it does happen, it happens in this scale that is so over the top. It's really exaggerated. Every time after a conflict ends, there will be like corpses littering the grounds of the town. It's like flies everywhere and, you know, rotten stench everywhere. It's just so much. <laughs> and, um... Talking about the town, this is also another similarity that I found, and that is, you know, Halimunda in uh, Beauty is a Woman is actually kind of like this fictional town. Uh, you know, it is it is not a town that is very renowned, <laughs> obviously, because, you know, it, it's fictional. But it's kind of similar to Makondo, because of how they seem to be this kind of hidden town somewhere, somewhat secluded somewhere, and yet, and yet, people still find it, you know, foreign powers still find that town, and they wreak havoc on that town, and uh, life in that town is very, very eventful, like, when things prosper, they prosper very much. And when things go bad, when things turn ugly, they turn extremely ugly. So we're talking about like very dramatic towns. Both Halimunda and Makondo, they are just over the top dramatic. Like everything happens over the span of, I don't know, around 100 years. <laughs> so... There's definitely that similarity, which I, which I find is kind of interesting. But of course, I wouldn't say that Beauty is a Woman is like a carbon copy of 100 Years of Solitude. Obviously, the themes are different. Um, in Beauty is a Woman, we... Oh, also another thing. Both books deal with some kind of curse. Okay, so I'm not going to spoil with you what's the curse in um, Beauty is a Woman. I think in Solitude, it was not exactly a curse, but more like a prophecy of sorts. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of different, but there is that kind of a, um, you know, magical thing that influences the life of the family members in 
the gener you know over you know across generations the kinds of supernatural element that cause the the lives of the generations to be so crappy so yeah that's kind of like the similarity in you know in that respect but yeah there is a curse happening in beauty's wound so yeah as a whole beauty's wound is this really um is a very over the top novel and i think probably the main reason why i love it so much is because everything in this novel is just feel really campy it's it, it's it's really dramatic it's really campy it's really flamboyant it's really exaggerated it's very over the top everything is just so psychedelic and colorful but in the in a more um violent and you know violent way and full of sexual assaults uh there are plenty of ugly things in this novel but they are kind of just presented in this like really you know extremely exaggerated fashion and so um i yeah again to kind of remind you guys if you do feel somewhat squeamish when it comes to certain things in the trigger warning below you know in the trigger warnings below um yeah maybe you would want to uh think again if you want to try this book uh but yeah there is uh, so much you know so much craziness happening in this book uh we find out what exactly is the curse at the end i think that's really interesting I kind of like how this book ends as well with uh you know with the lives of Dewi Ayu and her children and um overall I think that this book has really incredible um main characters I think that it has wonderful writing style I like the inclusion and treatment of magical realism in here and overall the tone is just so so dramatic and campy so yeah, um if you like the sounds of those things, maybe you would want to try this book. So I guess that's it for this video. Um I'll see you again in a different one. So maybe I'll do uh some more uh single book book talk videos in the future. Uh I'm still reading a few books right now, so I'm not sure for which books I would do this kind of chatty informal unstructured <laughs> video but uh yeah i'll see you again in a different one um different video so until then take care thanks for watching and bye bye